now that we're familiar with all of life and the different traits that different groups of animals have, let's put this all in context with what we share with other groups of animals. So now we're going to put humans in our context. Let's actually back up a little bit. Let's first talk about primates and what primates share with other groups of organisms. First, we're alive. We are living creatures. So this means we have DNA. Um, we use DNA to store our hereditary material and we are based on uh, in cells. That's our basic unit of, of structure. We are in domain eukarya. So that means we have a specific type of cellular structure. So we have organelles that carry out different functions within our cells, and we also have our DNA encased in the nucleus. Within domain eukarya, we are in kingdom animalia. So we are multicellular, we have multiple different cells, and we are heterotrophic. We consume other animals for food, or consume other things for food. Um, we are in phylum chordata, so that's where we have our notochord. Then we are in subphylum vertebrata. We have that vertebral column, so the vertebral column around that notochord. Within that, we have infraphylum nathosomata. Um, that just means we have a jaw, so we can um, bite things. Really, it means we can eat things that are bigger than our mouths. Then we are in superclass tetrapoda. We have four limbs. Within that, we are in clade amniota. We have an amniotic sac encasing, uh, encasing our eggs. Then within that, we are in class mammalia. We, so we have mammary glands, fur, and homeothermy. And finally, we get to order primates. So here, that's where we have our large brains, binocular vision, and our opposable thumb. Um, you might notice I included a few things here that we didn't go over in our past lecture. That's just because there's a lot of different things. But it's really cool to look at the different interesting traits that are associated with different levels. Um, notice that as we go down this list here, the biggest is at the top, and each level is nested within the group above it. So as you go down this list, each group is progressively smaller and more specific. So at the bottom, primates have all of these traits, and mammals have all of these traits except for the um, ones that are primate specific. But let's remind ourselves about primates and all the different groups here. First, we have our strepsirines on one side and our haplorines on the other. Within haplorines, we have our tarsiers, and then we have our anthropoids over here. Within anthropoids, we have our platyrines, our new world monkeys, and then our catarines. And within catarines, we have our circopithecoids, or old world monkeys, and then our hominoids, or our apes. Remember, it's very helpful to have a good understanding of how different groups are related to each other because that makes it easier to talk about. Um, if you need to, go back and review what we learned in our primatology module um, for the different traits for these primate groups. But let's get a little bit more specific. Let's talk about humans specifically. So within primates, we are haplorines. So that means we don't have our regnarium. But we are also um, anthropoids or infraorder semiaformi. So that means we are diurnal and we also have even larger brains. We're also very visually oriented. Then we're in parvorder caterini. So now we have larger social groups. We are in superfamily hominoidea. We have these really mobile shoulders um, because the ancestral hominoid like to hang beneath trees. But this is what allows baseball pitchers to do those big throws that they do today. Within that, we are in family hominidae. So now our brains are even larger and we have a large body size. Then we are in tribe hominini, and that's where we get bipedality, tool use, and all of the other fun things that we see today. So think back at all of the traits we talked about. What do we share with sponges? What do we share with jellyfish? What do we share with worms? What do we share with reptiles? And of course, what do we share with primates? If you can answer all of these questions, that will demonstrate a really good understanding of how we're closely relate or how we are related to these different groups of organisms. Some are relatively distant relationships and some are much more close, but it really helps to um, remember and be able to identify similarities between different groups of organisms. <music>